Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial on ASP.NET Web APIs. In this video tutorial, we will create an Web API lookup service that will return a list of employees in JSON format. We will be then consuming this employee lookup service by using jQuery AJAX calls. We will use this jQuery AJAX calls to list and search our employees. So let's go ahead and implement the Web API lookup service using ASP.NET. To implement our Web API lookup service, we would need to create a project. And to create a project, you need to open up your Visual Studio IDE. I'm using Visual Studio 2017. You can choose or use your preferred Visual Studio version. And to create a new project, you can go to New Project and you can name the project whatever you like. In my case, I'm naming the project Employee Lookup. I'm just going to change the folder where I'm going to store this project as I have created a project folder called as Web API tutorials on my desktop, and I'm going to add all my projects related to Web API tutorials within this folder. I will zip up this folder and upload it to my Google Drive and share the link in the video description in case if you need access to the code. I'm using .NET Framework 4.71. You can choose your preferred .NET framework. Anything above 4.5 should work perfectly fine. I'm using the latest framework version, that's 4.7.1. And for my project, I am going to choose ASP.NET Web Application .NET Framework. You can find that under the web option and you can select ASP.NET Web Application .NET Framework and then click OK. Now on the following screen, you need to select your MT Web API uh, project template and then select Web API and then click OK. Visual Studio will create the project for you. Once the project has been created, you will see the list of following files under the Solution Explorer. You'll have a folder for models, a folder for controller, a folder called as app start that contains your web API config.cs and we'll have a folder for app underscore data. To create our employee lookup web API service, let's first create a simple model that represents an employee with the help of the following steps. Right click on the model folder and then click add and then choose the option class for this class let's name this class as employee click add as you can see visual studio has created a class for us named employee and let's add some properties that are employee specific. So an employee will have certain properties like ID, name, email, mobile phone, address. So based on your choices, you can add those properties. I'm just going to add four properties. So one of them would be ID. Uh, the short cut to add properties is just type the keyword prop p r o p and hit tab twice this should add you properties and you can then hit tab and change this to id and i need to add one more property that would be data type string and it would be my employee's first name. Now I need to add another property. That would again be string. That would be my employee's last name. 
And finally, I would add another property that would be data type string and my employee's email. We'll be just using four properties for this tutorial. In case if you wish to add more properties, you're free to do so. So go ahead and click save. We have completed creating our model for the employee. Now let's add a web API controller for employee. So right click on your controller folder and add a controller. You will find a list of options to create a controller. We are going to select the web API controller that says empty and then click add. We are going to name this controller as employees controller and click add. So we have our controller class that inherits from API controller. Within your employees controller class, go ahead and create an employee array. This employee array will contain a list of all employees for your application. I'm not using any specific database that will store my employee data. Instead, I will use this employee array that will contain all my employee data. So go ahead and create an employee array. And you can name this array as employees. And this specific employee array will contain all the employee data for this application. To speed up the process, I have created a list of employees within my array and I have added it to this array. Go ahead, pause the video and create the list and then start watching back. After you have created the array of employees, that holds the list of employees information, you need to create two methods within your API controller class. The first method will get the list of all employees and the second method will get a specific employee based on the ID that is specified to the web API. So let's create the method that will get me the list of all employees. It's a public method and it's going to return a collection of all employees. So I will use a collection type here, I enumerable, and specify what type of collection it is. It's a type of employee collection. And I will name this specific method as get all employees. All this method is going to do is return the array that contains the list of employees. So return my employees array. Now I need another method that will return the employee by his ID. For that, we will create the method of type I HTTP action result and I'll call the method as get employee by ID. Since I need to get the employee by ID, we need to specify a parameter that will contain the ID. So based on the ID provided, the web API will get the employee and display it. So let's create a variable that will hold the results. So variable employee is equal to my collection, which is employees dot. Then I will call the first or default method on the collection. And I will use a link query here to get that specific employee with the ID that is specified within the parameter. Okay. 
now we do have to write a conditional statement here stating that if the id or if the result returns has null that means there's no employee that exists with that specific id that you are, we are searching then please display a returned error message with not found and if it an employee with that specific id that is specified within the parameter exists then then return a result okay that will contain that employee's information so first of all let's handle the error if the employee doesn't exist then we return and it uh, returns a null a variable returns null so we will say return not found HTTP not found that means what we were looking wasn't found and if it an employee was found then the response message should be okay that's 200 so the response 200 and also this return the employee so it will return the employee now that's it for our controller we created a list of employees we created a a method that will return all the employees and a method that will return only one employee based on the specified ID. So go ahead and complete the creation of this class and then continue watching the video. So far we have created a model which contains our employee properties and we have created an employee controller which contains the list of our employees which is stored in an array and also two methods one that returns all employees and a method that returns employee based on the id that we specify let's go ahead and run an application and call our api methods to see what information is returned because our web api doesn't have any interface you're receiving this error let's go ahead and call the api methods to call the api methods you would hit a forward slash and then type the word API and then the API name which is employees as you can see when we call the employees we receive a list of all employees that is returned back to us in the XML format and if we want to get the employee with a specific id let's say we want to get an employee with the id 4 we can just put a forward slash and specify our id that's 4 and let's hit enter and we have employee with the id 4 that is returned to us in the xml format but for some reason you would want to return this data in json format and we will go ahead and fix that as well we will I try to return this data in JSON instead of XML because JSON is much lighter and faster compared to XML. So it totally depends on your choice whether you want the data to be returned in XML or JSON. But I will show you how you can return the data in JSON format instead of XML. So go ahead and close this application and try to write some code that can help us return the data in JSON format. So for some reason you want to display the results that are returned in JSON format rather than XML format. And to do that, we would have to write just one line of code and we need to go to webapi.config.cs and just under our config.routes.map HTTP route method, we can write or add this line of code that will help us achieve our results in, the, in JSON format. So all you have to do is you have to call the config object that's our HTTP configuration object so config dot and then we have to call the form matters dot the JSON formatter dot the supported media types and then we need to add our required media type called the add method 
So to return the result in JSON format, we would need to create a new object of media type media type header value. So So media type header value is uh, is available under the library called HTTP net dot HTTP headers. So you can add it as your using statement and that should fix the error. And then you need to provide what type of uh, format that you want the config to be returned under. So you have to specify it as a string and then as and provide the media type so the media type would be text forward slash html that's it by adding this line of code the results that are returned for your web api would be returned as json format so let's go ahead and test it so run our application and call our web api so it's api forward slash employees hit enter as you see now the results are shown in json format instead of xml format that's the default so you can go ahead and also forward slash and uh, find the employee by the id let's say eight and hit enter and there it is. You can see that the employee with ID 8 is returned back and the format is JSON. So uh, that's it for uh, this specific video. And in the next video, I will show you how you can consume this web API using Ajax and jQuery. I don't want to make this video too long and boring. So I have divided it into two parts. In the next video, I will show you how you can consume this web API using Ajax and jQuery. Thank you.